All right, let me say a big welcome to everyone joining in to this service, wherever you, you have, maybe you're in your hotel room, you're in the room right there, the presence of God is with you. I'm praying for you this evening that the Lord will hear you. Yes, the Lord will hear your cry. An answer will come in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, this evening I will be sharing God's word. Um, if you have a Bible, please turn to Jeremiah chapter 17. I say a big thank you for the, this opportunity to my pastors to share God's word with us. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, verse 5 to verse 8. Jeremiah 17, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, verses 5 to 8. It says, this is what the Lord says, Cost are those who put their trust in mere humans. Yes, put their trust in mere, in mere humans who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. It says that they are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. It says they will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. It says, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have put and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. It says that they are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. It says such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. It says their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruits. I pray for you, you will produce fruits this year in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, um, so the first service of this year um, at the Kurodu Church was, uh, is our entrepreneurship service. Our first service is an entrepreneurship service. So I remember that uh, that morning we had gathered and we were grateful to God. It was going to be a morning to thank God for everything he had done for our businesses in 2021. And I shared that morning on trust God in your business, okay? Trying to communicate the charge that the matching charge that the senior pastor had given us for 2022. So preaching the message, I remember that I invited a man to come join me on stage to preach with me. Okay, so he comes up on the stage. I reassured him that he was fine and what was going to happen to him. And of course, he was smiling. So I told him that hope he knows that I'm his pastor and I love him. He reassured me, yes. So I told him that, okay, so right beside me now, there is actually a chair here. Yes, it's a chair. Does, they actually brought in the chair uh, before it came into the service. The problem is that the chair is invincible. Yes, the chair is invincible. And so I wanted him to sit on the invincible chair. Uh, you, you should see the smile. <laughs> on his face, oh, pastor, you're trying, trying to deceive me, okay? So, uh, but I used that analogy to preach the message for that day, okay, on how daunting it is, okay, for us to trust, for us to trust God. I don't know what area of your life you will be trust. you will need to trust God for this year. Maybe it's in your marriage, uh, maybe it's concerning your business. Maybe it's even in your work with God. Uh, it's a daunting task for us this year. And so I want to be able to share a few things with us this evening that should make that task a bit, a bit simpler. And I'm trusting God for you. You will hear God this year. Your trust will produce fruits for you this year in the mighty name of Jesus. The guiding word for the year is trust in God. Trust in God this year will be the difference between being blessed. Like you saw in that in Jeremiah chapter 17 that we read, Jeremiah was actually talking about the children of Israel at that time. Jeremiah had been prophesying and warning them that they had turned, they had turned from God to idols. Okay? They were now worshipping Molech, they were now worshipping Baal, okay? and they were no longer trusting God. So Jeremiah was trying to get them to come back to God and told them that, look, for those who don't trust God, this was what was going to be happening. And for those who trust God, this are the, you can literally itemize the things that are going to be happening to them. So trusting in God this year will be the difference between being blessed, okay, or experiencing lack, okay? Demonstrated it by uh, the, tree, the one that is planted by the water, 
that they live is always green, and the one that is by the, the marshland, by the wilderness, okay? It will be the difference between being successful and being a failure. I say, I dare say this year, someone will hear God, and one instruction from God this year will launch you, will catapult you into success in the mighty name of Jesus. It will be the difference between experiencing joy or sadness this year. I don't know which one you want. I'm sure you want joy. And so trusting in God is going to be very, very cru crucial between fulfillment and frustration, okay? Our trusting in God will be the difference. Psalm 125 actually puts it this way. Psalm 125 verse one puts it this way, the New Living Translation. All my scriptures for today will be from the New Living Translation. It says, those who trust in the Lord are as secure as Mount Zion. They will not be defeated, but will endure forever. Those who trust in the Lord are as secure as Mount Zion. So for those of us who will trust in God, who will choose to put our trust in God this year, however challenging it is, you will be as secure as a mountain. You will be unmovable. You will not be defeated this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Please say a believing amen. Trusting in God will be the difference between winning and, or losing. Yes, I dare say some of us will fight some battles this year. You will need to confront challenges that look like they are bigger than you. But because you are trusting in God, because you are, you are standing, God is on your side, you will take on those challenges and you will overcome them in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the concept of trust, okay, can be such a tricky one. You saw it you know, um, in my demonstration with that man on, on, on that day. Trusting okay, can be such a trickish one. Trust between people can also be very trickish. Husband and wife, parents and their children. I'm telling you, when it comes to the subject of trust, it can be very, very, very trickish and very, very, very difficult. Even for people that you believe they know themselves very well, you know, trusting one another, especially when trust has been abused once, can be such, such a difficult one. And then had a few indices right there, okay, two people that don't know each other very well, or maybe they speak different language, and you know that trusting can be such a difficult subject. So when the senior pastor told us this year that trust in God, Trust in God. I'm telling you, it is a task that we must be ready for this year. And as you get set for this, this task, you will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. You will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. So I remember my experience when we were building our house, and it was time to put in the roofing sheet. Um, so I called in somebody to, to, to do the quotes for the roofing sheet, and he brought his code, did his measurement, and of course gave us the quote uh, by square meter. And it was fine. Uh, the, the entire portion of the land is about 410 square meter. And so he quoted for about that, about 410 square meter. I don't know what was in my head. I should have realized that there was a large portion of the, of the land that we had left you know, for, for garden and then for parking. Okay, so, but I didn't care. I just felt maybe due to the depressions and the, and the different angles that the roofing sheet would be in, uh, maybe it will, it's, it's actually that much. So, I settled for 400 and something square meter. But something just told me to check. Yes, to ask, to get a second opinion. And then I gave, I called this organization here in Nigeria. Let me not um, do advertisement for anyone. I called them and then they said, oh, fine, that they will be excited to come, to come, uh, okay, come, to come quote also. So I told them, no, 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 you don't even need to come and quote. This is the measurement. Just bring the roofing sheet. Uh, since your price is even better. And the, and the manager said, ah, sir, so, so sorry, we don't do it like that, okay? We have to come and take our own measurements, okay? So I said, ah, that's fine, okay? It will be reassuring. So they came and we went to the site together. The guy goes off on the roof, first time, did this measurement, comes back down, and then after a few minutes, goes back up again, uh, did the measurement, comes back down, and um, did it a third time. I was feeling frustrated already, of course. Uh, I felt I could be somewhere else and come and stay here. After the third time, I had to ask him, I hope there is no, there is no problem. And he said, okay, 
actually the size of the roof is about 210 square meters. And so he had taken the measurement everywhere. Yes, I know someone said, wow. Someone said, wow, in the room. Yes, the size of the, of the roofing sheet that we needed was about 210 square meters. So I don't need to tell you, okay, how my interaction is with the next person that comes to quote for me. Yes, when trust is abused, especially when we have lost trust in people, we then project that also to God. It's the same way we treat God. Okay, so this evening, just to help us, let's take a definition, a dictionary definition of trust. Trust is defined as firm belief. Firm belief in the re reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something to perform to deliver on a promise, okay? So when we trust someone, somebody, we believe in their words. We believe what they have said. We, when we trust some, we, somebody, we believe that they are reliable and that they are capable to be able to keep their words. So when we say we trust God, it's the same. We are saying we are relying on God. We trust him to keep his word. We trust him that he will not, he, he will not fail. What trust actually does is that it reaches out, okay, uh, beyond what you can maybe see with your with your physical eyes, reach reaches out into into the impossible. Another word for trust maybe is faith. So when you are trying to trust God, just using the analogy I have used with, with, with human beings, you know that with God it can be a bit complex. Okay? So at least I'm dealing with a human being I can see. With God, I have not seen God before. Hallelujah. If you are in the chat room and you've seen God before, just wave your hands at the people there. Okay? None of us have seen God before. So how do you ask me to trust a God I cannot see, I cannot touch? In fact, I have not seen him before. How can I trust that he is on the other side? Imagine when you're trying to carry a bench. Okay, the Bible says that likewise the Spirit also helps our infirmities. The Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. Okay, so just imagine that you are trying to carry a bench. Uh, you lift your side because you think that there is somebody on the other side. And usually you can see the person. But in this instance, you can't see God, okay? God cannot be seen. And that was what Jesus was trying to give an, as an explanation to the, to the Pharisees in John chapter 6. John chapter 6, Jesus was telling them that, look, your, your explanations, okay, do not hold water because you have not seen God before. But I am from the Father. I have seen God before. He said, no one has seen God the Father, but seen God the Father before. But the one whom God sent, the Son, is from the Father, and that is why you can trust what I am saying to you. Okay, so one reason why it is challenging, difficult to trust in God is because we have not seen God before. So maybe now you understand why some people give in to idolatry, okay? Give in to a charm here and there. Uh, because at least with the charm, I can hold it and then I can say something or, or declare a few incantations and then something will just happen. But the God that you are dealing with is greater than any charm, any demon, any being created anywhere. The Bible says that he is the God who created the heavens and the earth and everything inside them. Hallelujah. Okay? So quite difficult for us to trust God because we have not seen him before. Another reason why it's a bit difficult to trust God is because God's ways are not our ways. And God's thoughts, sometimes, most times, usually, are different from our thoughts. And you see this happening again and again in the Bible, where people were trying to trust God from, for something, but the way God was thinking about that situation was different. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says that my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could ever, you could, you could imagine. In other words, you are thinking about this this way, but God is thinking about it in a different way. Imagine if this was a married relationship. Imagine, imagine how trust issues would be between them. But this one is you 
trusting God. God's ways are far different than our ways. A good example is when God says to the children of Israel that you are going to spend 400 years in captivity. God says also to those when Zedekiah was fighting against King, King Nebuchadnezzar, Jeremiah prophesied to them, told them, look, you will lose this battle because God already said that you are going to spend 70 years in captivity. Okay, so you will be, spend 70 years in exile. So just imagine in maybe after 50, year in, 50 years in exile or 300 years while they were staying in Egypt, you know, somebody comes and begins to prophesy or somebody comes and begins to hope that, the, that their stay in Egypt will come to an end. No, it was not going to come to an end because God's ways, God's thought already said it was going to be for 400 years. Okay, same thing for them when they were going to go to Babylon. He said it was going to be for 70 years. Okay, so you are listening in this evening. You know, you have it's difficult for you to trust God because you have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb and you have been praying and you have been praying and it seems as if God is not answering. So sometimes it's just God's ways and God's thoughts concerning the situation that God needs to open up to you, help you understand that it's timing, it's coming and you will still have that baby. And that is someone I'm praying for you this evening and you will conceive and have your baby in the mighty name of Jesus. Another reason why it's difficult for us to trust God is because his plans sometimes are just different from us. His plans, he has his own plans. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 actually says, he says, I know the thoughts, the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future, to give you a future and a hope. God says, I know my own plans for you. Okay, so if you connect to my plan, you will find that we are able to trust one another. But when you are connecting to someone, something else, or your plans are divergent from mine, uh, you see that trusting God can be, can be very, very difficult. And lastly, this evening, trusting God is usually hampered by our experiences with man. Yes. Trusting God is usually hampered by our, our experiences is with man. When man has failed you before, hallelujah. When man has failed you before, they gave you their word, they did not keep it. Some of us have been abused even by those in authority, those we respected. Then trusting anyone else in authority becomes almost impossible. So asking a natural man to trust God, a God that they cannot see, a God's wound way, in quote, they say they don't understand. It's like telling someone to attempt to walk on water. Yes, literally like that. Literally telling someone to attempt to walk on water. And we have two stories like that in the Bible I would just quickly like to share with us. Two stories that you see people who were able to trust God and they walked on water. Yes, they overcame their situation. And as you trust God, you will overcome every situation in the mighty name of Jesus. The first one is from Matthew chapter 14, verse 25 to verse 30. I will just paraphrase and then read some part of some, some, some few verses. So we know the story. The disciples had walked all day, and now it was towards in the evening. Jesus said he wanted to pray a little more and told them to be on their way. He was going to join them. I don't know why none of them bothered to ask him how he was going to achieve that, because they were living with the boat. Maybe they thought, okay, he would probably look for a boat and come on his own. But they left, and um, it was in the night, and um, they, were, they were in a storm. Let me start reading from there. It says about three Three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on water, walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their fears. They cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Hmm. Jesus says, I am here. And I'm saying to someone, in your marriage, in your home, Jesus is there in the mighty name of Jesus. And because Jesus said, I am here, look at what Peter did. Then Peter called to him, Lord, because you are here, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Tell me to tell, in other words, Peter fully understood what he was saying. Tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, Come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on, on the water towards Jesus. 
But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And of course, Jesus reached out and saved him. Um, so it's natural, okay, normal, that Peter was the only one who said, Lord, tell me to come. Okay, so that tells us that when you have a lot of people hearing God, very few people will step forward to just tr to simply trust him. When they know that the situation is impossible, when they know that what their eyes are seeing does not explain what you are asking them to do. How many of us would have stepped forward like Peter? If you, right there in the chat room, just lift, raise up your hands. I would have stepped forward like Peter. I, I know I would not have stepped forward. <laughs> Amen. But Peter stepped forward, and as he stepped forward, he received this miracle. As he puts his trust in God, he received his miracle. He started walking on water. Yes, along the line, as he began to look at the physical thing that were going on around him, his, his faith began to waver. But as long as he kept his focus on Jesus, he, be, he walked on water. As long as you keep your focus on Jesus, you will walk upon your high places. You will walk over every challenge that you are currently going through in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My second analogy is from the book, the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, Moses had led the children of Israel to come out of Egypt. Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 to 15. They had come out of Egypt with so much wealth. They had been so blessed. And now they, they, they had walked around for a few days. And they were right by the Red Sea. And the Egyptian army had mobilized to come and take on them. So I read it from, from there. It said, as Pharaoh approached, so obviously Pharaoh and the army approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked. When they saw the Egyptians overtaking them, they cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves. To the Egyptians, it is better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses, Moses began to preach. Moses, but Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Hmm. Another version says, why are you crying to me? Tell the people to go forward. I don't know about you, but if I was the one God told to tell the people to go forward, I would have looked in front of me. There is a Red Sea in front of us. Is it forward to the right hand or forward to the left? Of course, so forward should be clear, right? So forward into the Red Sea. God, are you trying to kill us? Are you trying to wipe out your people here? But God tells them to go forward. Okay, so I'm sure when Moses tells the people, God says we should go forward. How many of us would have stepped forward? <laughs> How many of us would have stepped forward when Moses said, God says, go forward. And I'm telling you, you see this experience again, even when the children of Israel were about to cross the Jordan. God said, go forward. But as Moses takes courage, because I'm telling you, it's going to take courage for you to take your dreams this year. Yes, that thing that God said is going to take courage to take hold of it. As Moses takes courage, begins to walk into the water. Because maybe some people think that when Moses, uh, when God told Moses, then the sea just parted. No, uh, most likely the sea parted when they entered, entered the water. How do I know? Yes, when the second time came, when they were going to cross the Jordan, the same thing happened. They carried the ark of God and entered the water. And when they entered the water, then the, the then the water, the Jordan parted. The same thing would have happened here. As they step forward into the water, uh, the, the sea parted for them. As you step forward this year, taking on challenges, not being afraid, because you know God told you, yes, you have the word of God, the sea will part for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will see miracles this year, creative miracles, miracles, abundant miracles, in the mighty name of Jesus, will be yours this year. 
in the precious name of Jesus. All right, quickly. So, how, so understanding that trusting God can be so difficult. Very few people were able to really reach out and trust, trust God by themselves. And you see this again and again in instances in the Bible. How do I increase? How do I increase, increase my trusting in God? I hope I stated the title of my message in the beginning, increasing your trust, your trust in God. How do I increase my trust in God? Okay, my advice this evening will be put in the acronym ORF. ORF, H-O-L-F. If you want your trust in God to increase, increase and work on your off. As you work on, on your off, you will see that your trust in God will be very easy. Trusting in God for you will be very easy. And off stands for hope, obedience, love, and faith. Hope, obedience, love, and faith. We'll read a few scriptures and just get to, to explain that. How do I increase my trust in God? Okay, you need to work on your hope. You need to work on your hope. The Bible says that hope does not disappoint us. Romans chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. Hope does not disappoint does not disappoint us. It says an endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Okay? Hope in God. Don't allow anything take away your hope. It says, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. He says, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. You will not be disappointed this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Your hope is literally an anchor. Hope is expectation of what God is going to do. Hope is expectation that God gave me his word. God gave me his promise. I don't know what you received from God when we were praying at the beginning of the year. And God, I dare say, God will be speaking to many of us all through, this, all through the year. Hope is open and holding on that thing that God said to you. Let's read the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 16, verse 18 and 19 gives us and explains it uh, in a very, very wonderful way. But I tell you, our hope is like an anchor. It keeps us steady. Even in the face of the storm, when the storm is coming and blowing you right, left, and center, you will be able to stand uh, despite everything the enemy is throwing at you. Put your hope in God and you will not be moved in the mighty name of Jesus. Hebrews, Hebrews, chapter, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. Hebrews chapter 16, okay, please, is displayed. It says, so God has given us both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable. God has given us both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who are fled okay, to, uh, to him for refuge can have great confidence. Yes, we can have great confidence in God. We hold on to the hope that lies before us. We hold Hold on to the hope that lies before us. Why? Because God gave us his promise. God gave us his oath. In other words, it will literally take God to die for God's word to fail. It says this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtains into God's inner sanctuary. I am praying for somebody. You will enter into the best of God for you this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Your hope will not disappoint you in the name of Jesus. But hope is anchored on the fact that God would not lie. Yes, God would not lie. God literally gave us his word. God gave, and I'm telling you, the words of God, the promises of God, they are backed by his word and they are backed by an oath. An oath that God says that, look, if I do not do what I said I will do. Jesus puts it this way. Jesus said that, look, one word, one single word, one jot of God's word will not fail until each one of them come to pass. So God is literally saying that if I do not do what I said I will do, I am not God again, and that will never, that will never happen. So put Put your hope in God. 
Put your hope in God. Put your hope in what God told you. Please write it somewhere. If God told you that you are going to have the baby, go and write it down. I'm telling you, you can take it to, to the bank. It's going to happen. If God told you this year that you will stand before kings, you will not stand before mere men. I want you to write, write it down. For somebody, God has given you a picture of where you will be at the end of the year. Take that picture. Go and place it somewhere because your hope will not disappoint you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that's H in off. The next one is obedience. 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 Trust and obedience go together. You cannot have trust without obedience. Actually, the two scriptures that we read, okay, uh, obedience was a very important feature for them to see those miracles. Okay? You cannot say that you trust God and then say you don't want to obey him. Trust and obedience are inseparable. You can't separate them. So if you ever come to the point where it feels as if you are not able to trust God, you are not able to, you are not able to obey the word that God has said to you, maybe you need to go back again and recheck it because oftentimes you will not be able to see the best of what God has said concerning you. You have to be able to obey God. When God told Moses, step forward, move forward, Moses obeyed, the sea parted, parted for them. When Jesus told Peter, Peter, come. Peter, come. Peter stepped on water and I'm telling you, water literally, I don't know what made the water become literally like a bare ground, but water became a bare ground. As you obey God this year, you will see fantastic miracles. You will see creative miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Often time with obedience, God is looking to what we will do in the face of pressure. And so despite everything, you remember that scripture will read in Jeremiah, it said, despite the eat, they will not be moved. I don't know what the economy will throw at you this year. I don't even know what COVID will throw at you this year. But as you put your confident hope in God, as you obey him, uh, you will stand firm. You will not be moved in the mighty name of Jesus. The proof of trust is obedience. The proof of trust is obedience. Mary told them, John chapter 2, verse 5, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And I'm saying to someone this evening, whatever God told you to do, uh, do it. And you will see miracles this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Alf. The third one is L. The L there is love. The L there is love. I dare say, look, the only way you can... Actually, the foundation, yes, the foundation of trust is love. If you meet two people who trust one another, just check it. There is love between them. Yes, there is love between them. So you have to be convinced of God's love for you, okay? God is not going to love you. God already loves you. And you have to be reassured of that. Don't allow the devil lie to you. Don't allow the devil tell you that because of what is happening around you, because of the storms that are around you, God does not love you. God already proved his love for you. John 3, 16, God loved the word so much. God loved you so much. He gave the word his best. Yes, he gave the word his, be his best. John 3, 16, and Romans chapter 8, verse 32 tells us that if God gave us Jesus, how will he not with Jesus freely? give us everything. Hallelujah. God loves you. Yes, you're listening to me in the hotel room. God loves you. I want you to type it right there in the chat room. God loves me. God loves me. And so I know that I can trust him. I know that I can trust him. I can put my trust in him and he will not fail me in the mighty name of Jesus. The last one is F. Is F. Faith. Yes. Faith. Faith gives us the capacity to be able to hold on to what we can see. There's a reason why the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Your faith this year, okay, will give you the strength to be able to hold on to what you can see. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, holding on to what God has said concerning you. And so I am challenging someone this year. This is not the year where you have to wait until you come to church to hear the word of God. No, this is the year where you read the Bible for yourself, where you read the word of God and search it and find out what is God saying to me concerning this situation. And you will walk upon your high places in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, just a few advice for us this evening, and then we'll pray. We'll pray this evening. 
Okay, so how do I, I've said we need to work on our half. How do I work on my half? My, my hope in God, my obedience in God, my love for God, and my faith in God. How do I make this work for me this year? The one thing you need to do is to keep your focus on Jesus. Okay, so many things are going to come to distract you this year. Keep your focus on Jesus, okay? Keep a laser focus on Jesus. So you have not seen God before because that is the lie the devil is trying to tell you. But you have seen Jesus. You know what Jesus did for you. When Jesus stood on that cross, he was proving God's love for you, okay? There is nothing greater than that, that one person will lay down his life for another. But Jesus laid down his life to pay the price for you. Okay, so keep your focus on Jesus. F keep your focus on the finished work on the cross of Calvary. And I'm telling you, your trust in God will multiply in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep your focus on, on Jesus. Secondly, be convinced of God's love. I already said that when we, when we talk about, about love. Keep, be convinced that God loves you. No matter what the year throws at you, no matter what the storm you see coming and going, be convinced that God loves you. You look at the cross, it is proof that God loves you. God loves me. God loves you. And I'm telling you, God's love will never fail because it is already settled. Jesus already died. The price already has been paid. Okay? So be convinced of God's love for you. Another thing you need to do is to maintain your spiritual fervency this year. Maintain your spiritual fervency by praying to God in every situation. This is not the year to make prayer the last thing you will do. No. Prayer must become the first thing you do this year. Maintain your, your spiritual fervency. Talk to God in prayer. Yes. Simply talk to your father. Are you going through a difficult time? Talk to him. Are things going excellently well? Tell him this year. Are there things oh, he has done one, two, three? He said he's going to do it up to 60. Thank him for the three that he has done. Talk to him and tell him that, Lord, I am still trusting you to see you do it up to 0.60 this year. Talk to God. Maintain your spiritual fervency this year. This is not the year to wait to come to church to come and pray. I know. And this is the year when you wake up in the morning, you must be able to talk to your father. You, you are going through the day. It doesn't matter what is happening. You must be able to talk to your father. Very, very important. Okay, maintain your spiritual fervency this year. And lastly, lastly this evening, fight the good fight of faith. When God gives you his word, I'm telling you the devil comes to try and take it. Jesus gave this analogy when he gave us, gave us the parable of the sower and the seed. When God gives you his word, the devil will come to try to take it. But you see, the fight of faith is not a fight against the devil. The, your, the fight that you have to do this year is to keep your focus, your trust in God. Our fight is not against the devil because that fight has been won. It has finished. Jesus already said it is finished. Jesus already said, I have the keys of hell and of Hades. Jesus already, the battle with the devil is done. Your battle this year is whether you will be able to put your faith in God. I will put my faith in God. Declare it with your, to yourself this evening. I will put my faith in God. I will put my trust in God. I will put my faith in God. Listen this year. You are not going to trust God just because Pastor Sam says it's our year to trust in God. You are going to have to walk on your off. Walk on your hope in God. Walk on your obedience. Walk on your love. Walk on your faith in God. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on Jesus and you will walk upon your high places in the mighty name of Jesus. Daystar, Raising Role Models.